Did you know corruption is costing Zimbabwe plus or minus 3 billion US dollars per year? Zimbabwe is not a poor country. Corruption is hurting us. Join us as we fight corruption, promote transparency, accountability, and integrity in all sectors. Transparency International Zimbabwe, the coalition against corruption. TIZ is in three regions in Zimbabwe, in Harare, Blawayo, and Mutare. However, we have a presence in other provinces of the country through dedicated men and women who form part of our accountability monitoring committees. TIZ offers advocacy and legal advice on corruption-related issues, community mobilization and advocacy, policy legislation and institutional monitoring, and research and information. For more information, visit our website, www.tizm.org. Our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also catch up on our live discussions on our YouTube channel, Transparency International Zimbabwe. Resist, reject, and report corruption. It's a good morning to you. Welcome to Asake Online. My name is Zenzel Ndevele, and this is the program, the Anti-Corruption Series, brought to you by Transparency International Zimbabwe. We know TIZ uh, promotes you know, transparency and accountability, and every week we'll be looking at uh, different issues to do with service delivery to make sure that we also, you know, how can we stop corruption as uh, citizens? Because we know every day, every year, Zimbabwe loses a lot of money uh, through corruption. Corruption. So we're encouraging uh, citizens to demand accountability. We also call upon local authorities and central government to be transparent, to be accountable, to make sure that uh, people get the service that they deserve. Uh, as local authorities, every month people pay their monies for rentals and they expect a service. But also every five years, we put in people in office and we expect them to deliver. So this program we will be talking uh, on issues to do with uh, service delivery, we're looking at policies and issues that make sure Zimbabwe is a better place, is a, a place where there's accountability and we don't have corruption. Today in our program, our guest is Ndogo Zochuma, who is a budget consultant and a service delivery activist. He works uh, a lot with uh, uh, resident associations and uh, is very much uh, passionate about service delivery and making sure that uh, you know, the monies that we, we pay uh, on local authorities actually go towards service delivery. Babuchuma, welcome to the program. Thank you, Zenzele. Good morning, viewers. Yes, when, when we talk about social accountability, what are we talking about? In simpler terms, we are talking about uh, uh, citizens holding uh, the, the people they've elected to public office to account for the resources, the services they are doing, and generally uh, the level of governance within a, an institution, be it local authority or be it at national governance level. Yeah, I, I know what you're gonna, sometimes we, we, we know we need to demand the service, but I have seen that people complain. Do, do you find that people really you know, demand good service from their elected official? People do demand uh, good services from, from their elected officials, but to a, a certain extent. There comes a time where they say, we have said enough. You know, they, they accept the status quo and become, you know, complacent and, you know, generally accept the level of poor services that they are getting. It becomes a norm to them comes part of their life. And that on its own is a worrisome trend because it actually, instead of uh, uh, condoning and condemning poor service delivery, it perpetuates it. Uh, most of the times, every five years when there are elections, we, we see MPs, uh, councillors, uh, making all sorts of promises. And yet, after the elections, uh, little is done to follow up on those promises made by politicians. You know. What do you think is the major challenge when people demanding uh, social accountability or service delivery? It could be an issue of uh, the general citizen not knowing their rights and abilities they have in terms of uh, bringing the public officials to account for whatever promises they have made. Generally, uh, our, our people uh, accept 
an individual uh, based on political affiliations. And after an election has been done, we, we begin to live our lives as normal, as if uh, there were no promises made, as if there are no challenges. I think we need to, to, to get to a point where we grow beyond uh, that level. After elections, we need to shut off the election mode and begin to really critically analyze and look at the situations. Are we really getting what we have? we have voted for? Are we really getting value for the votes that we have cast, value for the money that was spending, and, and so forth? People need to, to get to the level that they are aware of the rights that they have, the power that they have. Because simple, in simpler terms, uh, Zenzele, uh, people have the power to even recall an elected officer. But very few of us are, aware, are, are, are potentially aware of that. We need to get a time or a period where we educate one another about our rights and the powers that we have as a people. You know, looking at Bulawayo, we have seen that for the past few years or months, you know, our standards of service delivery has gone down. We're complaining about potholes, we're complaining about water, we're complaining about, you know, refuse collection that now happens once in a while. What could be the, 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 the problem? There are quite a number of uh, factors that contribute to that. Uh, the beginning point is that our political landscape, our political system is partisan. When people are elected to offices, they are going there to push the manifesto of the political affiliations that they are, they are representing. Instead of more uh, uh, voicing out what uh, the people who voted them into office are demanding, they tend to, to tow the line of the party in fear of being recalled. Like we've seen in the past, a certain party recalling quite a number of its representatives because they somehow uh, 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 differed in terms of ideology from the party position or the party manifest. This is the beginning point. And that on its own uh, leads to, uh, for example, in local authority, Bulawa City Council, there's a lot of council, councillor interference and political manipulation. You'll find that councillors will, instead of representing, they, start be, uh, they, they begin to collude with the, the management of the local authority, trying to protect, uh, per se, the reputation of their political party that is perceived to be the governing party within the, the local authority. And then the second thing that has lead, led to the level of deplorable services that we're getting is the issue of corruption and lack of accountability and transparency. We are largely made away each and every passing day we see headlines in the paper of corrupt activities taking place. We see, we, we rarely get to hear uh, the individuals that have been uh, uh, cited as being corrupt, being brought to account for their corrupt activities. In other words, there's very little of transparency in the manner in which the local authorities operating and that on its own is uh, uh, accentuated by the fact that there is no ease of access to information by the general public. It is difficult for, for the general citizenry, general residents to, to get information from the local authority. And the other issue could be uh, inadequacy of citizen participation. Like I alluded earlier on, uh, people are just complacent about their situation and they've just accepted that ah, we are used to this and they really uh, get to participate. If, for example, a, a budget consultative, a pre-budget consultative forum is called, very few people will participate. But at the end of the day, once the effects of the, the, uh, uh, the process from the budget consultations are implemented, most of us tend to cry because uh, we see that uh, a number of things will be divergent. It is because of uh, our lack of participation. And then the other issue that I, I'm seeing that uh, accentuates also the level, the poor service delivery levels that we, we tend to see, are poor human resources policies uh, that are implemented by the local authority. You, you, you see a local authority having employment contracts that are not tied to uh, performance. They are not performance based, based. You have a director sitting in a capacity that is in charge of uh, 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 roads, in charge of engineering services, in charge of water. But you, you, we get a city that virtually has a collapsed road network and no one is accounting for that. Uh, if I were to ask you how many roads has the city council or the local authority built in the number of years that we have had having taken over power from the, the Smith regime, we are tending more 
to, to manage what we, 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 we inherited from the past, from the uh, uh, past regime, from the past uh, pre-independence uh, regime. And that is a, a worrisome trend. The other issue that I also note, which con contributes largely to poor service delivery, is our failure to manage change. You know, we are living in a fast-moving world, and there are a lot of things that are changing, and we tend to be overtaken by circumstances, as if we are caught unawares, we are, we are somehow surprised. We are fail, failing to manage change, and that on its own leads to, to poor service delivery. Uh, one can also talk of a lack of employee capacity. We are aware that uh, local authorities are operating with limited resources. That is a fact. We cannot run away from The rates that are, we are paying as residents do not uh, uh, really cover much ground in terms of what our expectations are. And as such, it becomes difficult for a local authority to engage more employees to cover the, the areas that uh, are really needed. And that on its own also contributes towards poor service delivery. And then the other issue, needless to say, is poor planning. You can't talk of managing change when you've got no strategic plans. We need to, 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 be, to, to we, at this point in time, we need people that are visionary, people that can foresee things before they happen. And currently, I, can, I cannot attest and say we, we have that type of leadership. Most, mostly, our leaders are reactive than proactive. We react to situations uh, uh, when they have happened, instead of coming up with ideas to to cushion ourselves from, from unforeseen eventualities, we tend to react. Then the, the other issue uh, could be uh, an aspect of poor performance monitoring and evaluation systems. We, we have no tangible systems that we can use as a local authority to track and monitor performance and monitor our service delivery levels. The last thing that, I, that can come off it is poor coordination of the service delivery processes. Uh, the way we, we, we roll out our services is poorly coordinated. And for a 21st uh, uh, country, or for a local authority in the 21st century, to be still using old and methods of uh, uh, refuse collection. In other countries, for example, since you go to Johannesburg, the, the refuse collectors do not get to hold and throw the pin into the, the, the garbage van. The, the garbage vans come with a system where they will just place the pin, it lifts it up, pulls it in, lifts it down, it pushes it out. This is modern technology. We are moving, that kind of a city is moving with the times, but we are still using the same archaic methods. I'm saying we are failing to manage change. Generally, I can see, say these are some of the factors that are potentially contributing to poor service delivery levels that we, we see within our local authority. Yeah, you have mentioned a lot of uh, very interesting uh, topics or issues, but one of them is uh, the budget consultations. Mm. That people are consulted whenever each year there is a budget uh, you know, uh, being drawn. I always ask myself, at the end of the year, do people then know that a uh, budget learner that was approved, this is what the money was used for? Is there a process to then go back to people? Okay, how can people then make sure that the budget that they, are, they, they were consulted or approved was actually used for what it was meant to do? Uh, the, uh, the, the, the important thing that we need to be aware as, as uh, citizens and residents is that we have the capacity to, to track public expenditure. It is within our purview, within our responsibilities, within our power to track how the monies that we contribute or we pull together as residents towards uh, 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 funding service delivery within our local, local authorities are used. And for that to be possible, we need to be uh, people that are seen to engaging, to be engaging the local authority, demanding information. One thing that I can say to you, uh, uh, even on air right now, is that the local authority is never been forthcoming in terms of uh, 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 granting the public access to information. It is a difficult thing to get, uh, inform it is difficult to get information from the local authority, but it is within our rights as residents to demand for it. Uh, 
We can even uh, push that they publish their financial statements. For us to be able to know how the money has been used, we need financial records. You can never get to analyze uh, expenditure or analyze incomes without a proper financial statement. We need the, the, the local authority to be seen forthcoming uh, in availing uh, 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 financial, uh, their financial records and any other. I know they will quickly tell us that uh, the minutes for the Army Management uh, uh, Council meetings is available for inspection at the, the city hall. But how many people can access that place? And how many people at a time can be able to view the minute book? Uh, we are living in a world where COVID has taken uh, 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 most of our time and we are under quarantine. And for us to have the whole of the city going to, to inspect the council minutes there, it's, it's a challenge. Why don't you upload this on, on the website? People, anyone who's got interest to find out what was discussed in the council chambers can access that kind of documentation online and so forth. And we limit the, the movement of people within one place. Yes, uh, if you are just joining us, this is the Breakfast Club, a program that is brought to you by Transparency International Zimbabwe. And today we are talking about uh, social accountability and our guest is Ntokozo Chuma, who is a budget expert, talking about uh, social accountability, service delivery, and how citizens can demand you know, social accountability and better service. You talked also about uh, you know, the budget limitations. You know, of course, we know the economy is not doing well. But I find that, uh, so if the economy is not doing well because of COVID, the city council would say, you know, citizens are not paying, so we are not able to deliver. What are other, you know, methods that can be used by city councils to mobilize resources? It's a pity that we still have a local authority that is heavily relying on rate, uh, rates. And in an, in an environment where we are aware that the majority of the population is unemployed, we are aware that Bulawa has suffered a lot of deindustrialization, has suffered a lot from deindustrialization. Very few companies, the factories that we had have been turned into churches. So employment levels, I can safely say 95% of local residents are unemployed. A few uh, are employed. Luckily, those that are employed are even shipped from other uh, areas who have come here as economic uh, uh, class who have come here to take over positions. So it is imperative for, for the local authority to diversify their revenue streams through creating other sources of revenues. For example, by creating uh, business uh, ventures that can fund the service delivery process. I will give you a perfect example, the city of Johannesburg. Have you ever wondered, Zenzel, why uh, uh, Johannesburg is called a coli? The word a coli is derived from gold, colid. It is because that city was built from proceeds uh, uh, that were generated from the city deep mines. Huh? And out of that, the, the, local, the, the local authority then, it was in the 1880, 1886, if I'm not mistaken, had invested in mining ventures. And out of the process from the mining venture, they built that uh, city of Glitz and Clam. The modern day city of Johannesburg runs successful business ventures. They've got a city power. Uh, company that you know competes equitably with ESCO in providing power and electricity to its residents, and that generates a lot of revenue. They've got um, metro buses, a, a, a transport unit that provides a transportation. Unit. They've got the, the metro bus, they've got the Riava buses, and those are competing with any other transportation models and generating adequate revenue to fund service delivery. Here, unfortunately, with our local authority, we are relying on rates. I am saying. Diversify your revenue streams and think outside the box. Come up with other business interests, business ventures that can potentially fund the, the, the service delivery process without having, heavily relying on, on, on rate payers. We have got the SLP farm. We have got the Montgomery farm. We used to have a lot of cattle there, and now there is nothing. And I was so disheartened when I had one uh, local authority official backed up by a councillor saying, I oh, know we want to venture into courts in a farm that had heads and heads of cattle. What happened? No one was brought to account for the, no one accounted for the, 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 the loss of the cattle that, the head of cattle that we had. We have got, in SLP farm, we've got mining interests. We have had gold claims, claims of gold deposits in the SLP farm. And we've seen even some council officials asking to go and grab a piece for themselves as individuals. Instead of parceling out 
those mining claims. Why can't the city invest in those? Mine and then generate revenue to fund service delivery. We cannot be crying that we have got limited funds, yet we have got a vast potential that we can tap into. We can also use local tourism. What happened to Mkuza Nature Park? Chabala La Sanctuary, those were, the, during our time when we were young, you and I when we, we were young, we would visit Mkuza Nature Park to go and see animals, Chabala La Sanctuary, and those were tourist attraction uh, centers because of uh, neglect, and that the places are now lying derelict. No one is going there, and we have lost revenue. We need to diversify and disinvest in relying on raids to fund our service delivery. If we continue doing that in this current setup, we are not going to go anywhere as a local authority. But don't we have a situation, or won't we have a situation where the council will also then say, ah, no, the economy is not doing well? I mean, what happened to Ingwe, for example? which if you hear or read history, don't know, Ingwe was used to build most of these uh, western suburbs, uh, beer cells, you, you know, and yet uh, right now it's just a venture that is also struggling like many others. Remember earlier on I mentioned uh, the poor human resource uh, policies. Where you engage people and offer them positions without tying them to performance, the challenges that perhaps we face in Ingwe are a result of uh, uh, poor human resources policies. We have incompetent people perhaps, I'm, I'm speculating here, I have no evidence of that. We have uh, potentially incompetent perhaps people that are uh, running uh, the council ventures and are not being held to account for, for, for the losses. One would even wonder how much has Ingwe contributed towards the, 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 the city council, local authority fiscals. We have never had, when, when budget presentations are done, we rarely hear of, okay, this is the amount of money that we are budgeting to use as proceeds from dividends that we generate from Ingwe Proares. No one is account, holding the local authority to account for the revenue generated through its uh, SPU, which is Ingwe Proares. And you remember, Ingwe was, was one of the first uh, traditional uh, Proares companies within the southern hemisphere. And Right now, they've been overtaken by Delta with their super. What happened? Where are we missing it? So those are some of the things that we need to review and ask ourselves as, as residents. Do we have the right people managing the city's affairs? If not, what then should we do? This is now bringing the social accountability aspect into the fore. Yeah, you, your last question you're saying, do we now have the right people running the affairs of the city council? And where the citizen comes in is in terms of electing those right people. You know, over the years we've seen that, uh, I mean, I hate to say this, but the, 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 the quality of councillors has been going down, you know, starting in 1980, uh, coming because I don't want to say which year we had the West, mm -hmm. but we've seen that the quality is going down. And as citizens, what can we do to make sure that we elect people who have the city at heart? The beginning point, uh, Babundebele, is to change from this mentality of voting people into office because of political affiliation. Instead of voting people based on the, uh, the political party they are affiliated to, interrogate a candidate on what they are capable of bringing to the fore. And try also and investigate their past. How clean are they? What are the achievements? You cannot elect somebody who has never done anything, who has not even built a, 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 a half a room, and then you say, ah, this person can build you know, setups in the city. Honestly speaking, where are you heading? Someone who has not done anything, someone who has not shown any potential. We need to interrogate each and every candidate and see the potential and ask them, okay, what is it that you can bring to the fore? Measure that against the actual performance. Track their actual performance on a continuous basis, even after the elections. And if they are failing, withdraw them. Do not wait for the next so many years. You rather withdraw and get into another re-election mode where you get to put the right candidate who can take the city's uh, needs uh, uh, as, it, as a priority. Now, as a citizen here in Blau, do you think you're getting value for your money? I would want to answer that question by asking a few questions to you. Uh, are services like refuse collection delivered on time? No. Do residents have ease access, of, access to basic council services like water, health, as and when needed? No. 
Does the local authority respond on time to customer complaints and service delivery complaints or challenges like best sewer pipes, best water pipes? No. Has the local authority addressed most of the needs of the residents? No. Is the money that the ratepayers are paying enough to fix our challenges? No. Has the local authority done something to try and generate more revenues outside of the rates? No. What is the state of our roads? Are our roads in a conducive state? No. So are the residents getting really value for their money? My answer would be, I don't think so. Yeah, that's, uh, those are the, the critical questions that you're asking, that when we talk about value for money, those are the things. And my, my, my last question to you is, what can, I mean, do you see us having a solution anytime soon? Because we've been complaining, and we keep complaining, and the situation keeps getting worse. I mean, I don't know whether the, the COVID has come up with the collapsing of structures as well. But if you go to Rinkini, just drive around town, you see where they, you know, I was driving towards Mpilo the other day, I saw in the bus stop, metal structure bus stop. It just collapsed, you know, and, and no one could just dig in and fight the wood. Everything is collapsing. How do we get out of this mess? How do we get our city back? I think the first, and, uh, the first and foremost thing that we need to do is to be cognizant that we have a responsibility to play as residents. What is our part? What have we done? We are aware uh, that uh, there's been grossly a lot of mismanagement in terms of uh, city resources and assets. But what is it that we are doing as residents? You will find Mr. Chu dropping a piece of paper and you will expect someone to come up and pick up that paper. You will find someone cutting off the poles, the sheds that we had. Some, I, I want to tell you, some of the infrastructure that we are complaining about, which we are now saying the local authorities failed to manage, uh, they have collapsed as a result of uh, one, our negligence, and two, our, how can I put it, our skewness in terms of failing to, to be responsible enough as citizens, holding each other accountable for the, the mistakes that we do. There are people that are going around cutting the poles to go and use them for other uh, uh, things, their own personal things. And yet, that is a public infrastructure. What is it that we are doing to, 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 you know, to, to get these people arrested? Because we know them, we live with them in our society. I think for, for us to have the change that we want, the change must begin with me and you, begin with us. We need to have a change in our mindset. Start doing things right. Pay our rates on time. Be responsible people. Avoid littering our city and a, 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 a value. It will We start doing things the right way. So sends us something wrong. We bring them to book, hold them accountable and responsible for, for that. I mean, I, I have this personal philosophy. If I see you throwing a piece of paper on the, on the street, I will ask you to pick it up. This is what we need to do. And secondly, we need to come out of that shell. We will wait for Zenzele to publish the mistakes that are done by the council. We will wait for Chuma to talk about the ills that we see in our society. It is our purview. It is in, within our purview and within our responsibility as individuals to also uh, take that initiative individually and hold the, the city fathers, the, the city managers to account for the wrongs that they are doing. Thank you very much for this uh, enlightening discussion where we are talking about social accountability, service delivery, and you know you, you raise very critical issues to say, as a citizen, what are you doing as well? What have we contributed to make sure that uh, our city is a better place to live? You know, people dump uh, stuff around, papers, pampas. These days, we have a mask, we have a mask, yet the mask could be actually be having the, the, the COVID virus. Mm. So we also need to love our city. Mm. But also we need to elect people who will deliver. And we, we have always True. said, I think our people should go beyond political parties. And as a citizen, the last election, are they worth to be a council? Mm -hmm. What have they done? Are you going to vote for them in the next, in the next election? Because you look at some of the people who are called councillors and uh, you say, the person is failing to manage themselves. Can they really manage their affairs of the council? Mm -hmm. So we need to be serious about the people that we elect into office because they determine the kind of a city we live in. True. This is the program that has been brought to you by Transparency International Zimbabwe and we are talking about social accountability, making sure that we get value for money. Yes, we do pay our rates, 
and yes we expect service and a better one of course because the infrastructure that was left by Ian Smith is collapsing because we are failing to build our own. Mm. My name is Zenzen and David. Till we meet again in other programs, have a good day. Did you know corruption is costing Zimbabwe plus or minus 3 billion US dollars per year? Zimbabwe is not a poor country. Corruption is hurting us. Join us as we fight corruption, promote transparency, accountability and integrity in all sectors. Transparency International Zimbabwe, the Coalition Against Corruption. TIZ is in three regions in Zimbabwe, in Harare, Blawayo and Mutare. However, we have a presence in other provinces of the country through dedicated men and women who form part of our accountability monitoring committees. TIZ offers advocacy and legal advice on corruption-related issues, community mobilization and advocacy, policy legislation and institutional monitoring, and research and information. For more information, visit our website, www.tizm.org, our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also catch up on our live discussions on our YouTube channel, Transparency International Zimbabwe. Resist, reject, and report corruption.